All right, next up we have a uh, innovative products presentation being put on by uh, uh, Tom Donnelly of Transpo, Brian Mintz of uh, Foscrete, and uh, Matt Ross of CTS. Thank you, Jason. Uh, good morning, I'm Tom Donnelly with Transpo, and this will be a joint presentation between uh, three industry members that are also exhibiting here today. Uh, Brian Mintz will be going next, and then uh, Matt Ross from, from CTS. Uh, before we start, though, I want to give a brief, uh, I did a little bit of a literature search and then talked with a few of the DOTs. Uh, there's a number of resources that are available out there on bridge deck patching. Um, one of the reports that really stands out is a sharp report. It's a little bit dated. It was done back in 1993 by Mike Sprinkle and his team at VDOT. Um, the interesting thing about Mike's paper was even before bridge preservation was really being even talked about in 1993, he approached it from a systematic approach as far as looking at the deck. Okay, that is taking into account once you take that lane down, you're not only out there bridge patching the deck, but look at chasing cracks, repairing joints, et cetera, et cetera. So it's an excellent report. If anybody needs a copy of those resources, see me afterwards. I also had the opportunity to talk with a few of the uh, Bridge, Midwest Bridge Partner, albeit it was a very short discussion. I sent a list of questions to uh, Scott Neba. Is Scott here from Iowa DOT? Did Scott make it? But uh, Scott sent uh, the questions out to the six districts, and we ended up with uh, four of those districts, four of the key districts that have really aggressive uh, bridge deck patching programs that are kind of approaching it from that systematic approach. They had some great ideas on uh, winter emergency patching where they're using techniques such as heating the pavement or using hot water. And then they also listed out the materials that they were using, which we're really going to focus on in this presentation today, okay? Uh, Michigan DOT, as many of you know, have a has a very robust bridge preservation program. Uh, there's seven regions in the state. Each has at least one uh, bridge repair crew. Uh, three of those crews in the high traffic, high truck traffic areas have uh, mobile mixers where they're using some of the other products that uh, the guys will be talking about here shortly. But the, the interesting thing about the key to Michigan's success is the communication between central office and the regions, quite honestly. Um, for example, the regional process, it begins with the inspection and scoping of the decks, um, that is, the, which is done by the inspectors in the region. The region then discuss the projects, they prioritize the projects, the crews then decide the schedule, being flexible enough to move up uh, those critical decks, et cetera. But the interesting, interesting thing about the way that the crews approach it is that systematic approach. Once they take that lane down, they're looking at other strategies, bridge preservation strategies that can be done, chasing cracks, like I said, joint maintenance, patching, et cetera. And again, communication is the key that I found in Michigan between central office and the regions, okay? And it really comes with the support that they provide. They're not, uh, the central office is not only providing support to the regions, but over 300 agencies in the state as well by assessing their needs, uh, providing education support, which is really a key out there, uh, hands-on training. I don't know if anybody's ever attended their uh, annual bridge deck alignment meeting, I think, that they have in the spring months. It's great if you get the opportunity. Summer job site support that they're providing to the regions as well as the agencies, but procurement, they're helping out with, with the uh, regions as well as. Now, I'm gonna jump right into talking about the materials, which again, this is a presentation on materials that are used for bridge deck patching. Our polymer uh, concrete material uh, crosses over the three modes of transportation, and mainly due to the fact that it cures at low temperatures and it can return to service quickly. Um, Michigan has been using our product now for three years. We just completed our second season with the, uh, working with the Mackinac Bridge Authority. How many people have gone over the Mackinac Bridge here? Show of hands. <laughs> okay, that's great. Um, I was with the Mackinac Bridge crew last year when they were doing repairs, and I'd like to debut this video, if you don't mind, that we uh, produced in cold weather application. And then I'll hand it over to Brian here next. Transpose T17 Polymer Concrete Rapid Patch is a 100% reactive, prepackaged material system. Designed for new construction and rehabilitation, it is easy to handle in all working conditions and requires no special tools or equipment. Partial or full depth applications can be accomplished in a single pour. The following is a T17 cold weather bridge application. The concrete substrate must be prepared 
clean and surface dry. Once prepared, the surface is ready to be primed. To seal the existing concrete surface and increase the bond strength of the T17 to the substrate, the supplied primer can be applied with brushes or rollers. The T17 liquid and prepackaged powder component can be mechanically mixed in a small portable drum mixer. For deep applications, coarse aggregate supplied by Transpo is added during mixing. Once the materials are mixed, they are placed onto the primed surface. Finish using standard tools. Brooming or tining is not recommended. Return to service. Unlike cementitious base materials, T17 cures in less than one hour. Where rapid cure, high strength, and low temperature applications are necessary, T17 Rapid Patch is the material chosen by engineers and contractors, and it is the only material on the market that can satisfy all these requirements. Thank you for watching this T17 Rapid Patch video by Transpo. For any additional technical information on T17, please contact our materials experts or visit www.transpo.com. Hi, I'm Brian Mintz. I'm Vice President with Fosgri Concretes, and today I'm going to give you a very brief capabilities briefing. If you want more details, please come and talk to me during the meeting or visit our website at fosgri.com. Using, fo using Fosgrete for concrete repair is the ultimate sustainable solution. Save time, labor, material disposal, and replacement costs, and extend the service life of aging structures. Fosgrete is often the lowest in-place cost repair solution when you factor in time and labor savings. Fosgrete is a next generation MAGFOS concrete repair material. MALP stands for Magnesium Alumino Liquid Phosphate. It does not contain ammonia, has no odor, and does not outgas. Fosgrete HC is a fiber reinforced horizontal castable cementitious concrete for bridge deck patching, expansion joint nosings and headers, and form and pour repairs. Fosgrete VO is designed for hand pack and trowelable applications. Fosgrete is a rapid curing, high early strength material. No sandblasting, <coughs> pardon me, or surface treatment is necessary before or after installation of Fosgrete. Fosgrete is self-consolidating, but not self-leveling. This expansion joint is over five years old. Fosgrete does not stick to plastics or polymers, including the styrofoam blue board. This full depth repair took only 20 minutes to fill, running two people mixing. Fosgrete forms both a chemical and a mechanical bond with clean sound concrete, so no cold joints. Fosgrete HC achieved a 94 durability factor on the ASTM C666 Procedure A test for freezing and thawing after 300 cycles. On contact, Fosgrete converts iron oxide to ferric phosphate. One trip up the cherry picker to patch this bridge beam with Fosgrete VO saved lots of time. Fosgrete VO is an excellent material to quickly and permanently repair the damaged corners rather than return the precast panels for replacement. 
A full pallet of Foscrete SG can be applied in less than one hour for fast and permanent repairs. Fibers in the material keep the nozzle clear, minimize rebound, and achieve high compressive and bond strength in less than one hour. The freezing point of Foscrete activator is minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, so it can be used where water-based materials will freeze. Foscrete fast set admix packets are added to the mix when temperatures drop below 50 degrees to speed the setting time. Foscrete was evaluated by the University of Kentucky as an excellent fast setting cold weather repair material. Use Foscrete to fix your concrete this winter. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Matt Ross, the regional sales manager for CTS Cement. And today I'm going to just talk about our rapid set low P material. The rapid set low P cement is a calcium sulfaluminate based material as opposed to Portland cement based material. This uh, technology has been used in overlays as well as repairs. Rapid set low set low P cement requires only addition of water and aggregates to produce concrete with performance characteristics greater than other cement based overlays and concretes plus a corrosion resistance. Low P technology has the same life cycle performance as um, latex modified concrete, silica fume concrete, or rapid set uh, latex modified concrete. The very early tensile strength gains in the product are boo due to the fact when the calcium sulfaluminate hydrates, it basically in a Portland cement, 50% of your water is lost through bleed, bleed water and is only there for water of convenience and transportation. With our product, you only have 2% of the water that's not hydrated. Therefore, there's no bleed water, there's no channels. So we reduce, we reduce the uh, cement paste we have much lower permeability in the product. Uh, we have rapid bond strength development due to the rapid strength gain of the product. And we also have lower in, in, uh, unit cost in place. This is an example of a project uh, on Route uh, 95 in Foxboro, Massachusetts. You can see here after they uh, did the uh, hydro demolition, we found that we had some uh, full depth repairs that were gonna have to be done formed up the bottom uh, and prepared the surface for a full depth patch. All of our material is usually mixed in a uh, volumetric mixer. And here you can see the full depth patch is being placed. Uh, the surface preparation, the cleaning is done, the chipping is done. Uh, basically we're clean and uh, saturated surface dry condition and then we can apply the uh, patch material. In this particular case, we did the full depth patches and then put a uh, uh, low P bridge deck overlay on it. I know the Missouri Department of Transportation uh, contracts either the patches and uh, overlays out and they've also done them in house. And then we open the bridge to traffic. Structural considerations, basically the early strength development in th two to three hours, the tensile strength, uh, that helps uh, resist uh, cracking from uh, movement. Also, we can resume construction, so if you have a phase portion of your bridge, you can come in and you can uh, move forward after two to three hours or open to traffic sooner. Reduces drying shrinkage. If you don't have any water, you're not losing the water. Very little drying shrinkage, and we have a wet cure at two to three hours. Basically, uh, faster monolithic bond. The pull-off test can be done in 24 hours. The permeability that we see is in the five to 900 range of coulombs at 56 days. So excellent freeze-thaw resistance. Wet cure, basically rapid set, low P. We have a two to a three hour, 3,000 PSI open to traffic. Uh, 
And then with RS LMC, the uh, three to four hours, 3,000 PSI. If you look at latex modified, you're looking at a three day wet cure. Silica fume, typically, you have a seven day wet cure and low slumps of one day. And you can also expect some uh, shrinkage with those products. The advantage, again, for using the Rapiset Low P is there's no need for uh, liquid latex to be added at the project site. We have that incorporated in the, in the cement. Uh, there's less, less mobile mixers that are needed for a particular application. Uh, of course, your cement content is less, therefore there's less shrinkage. Uh, concrete is compared with uh, latex modified concrete, and the in-place cost is less than RSLMC latex modified or silica fume concrete. Very fast tensile strength development and we're open to traffic in less than two hours. Uh, that's what I have. We have a booth upstairs. Anybody's welcome to come see me if you have any questions. I've got a question. You talked about the cold uh, placement. How, how cold is cold? And uh, and uh, how long, I mean, once it's set, does it matter if it stays cold? Does it, do you have to do anything, any length of time? And, and, and then the durability of those type of patches. I think Brian actually had this uh, temperature. <clears throat> being, talking to somebody from Minnesota, I guess, um, cold is really cold. <laughs> the, the freezing point of phosphorite's liquid activator is minus 20 Fahrenheit, so we don't have an issue of working or mixing below freezing. We have done tests with the University of Kentucky where their goal was to see how much of our fast set admix you could add in order to get one hour compressive strength of 3,000 PSI to open a road for traffic, and they put in a lot of fast set admix. Typically, we'll use two packets to get down to about zero degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll still get uh, compressive strength of 3,000 PSI between one and two hours. So it depends on a lot of factors, the volume and uh, the volume of material, the temperature of the air, the temperature of the bags and the jugs, the temperature of the substrate, all those factors come into play. But at the end of the day, it's still setting up pretty darn fast and opening for traffic without any primers or any curing compounds. And same thing with the polymer concrete, it's low temperature. And there was, I think there is one other vendor here with a different type of chemistry. So there's three or four different types of polymer chemistry Ours is MMA, there's polyester, and epoxy. So there's three different types of, and I believe they all perform about the same as far as a low temperature range. Question for Brian. Um, when you use your material, do you see the halo effect um, when, when you repair some of those ugly concrete rebar? But the short answer for the halo effect is no, we don't experience it with phosgrete. The material cures slightly acidic, and what we've understood about how the halo effect works is that the corrosion tends to go from a less, for a more alkaline environment to a more acidic environment. So when you put in an alkaline-based repair material, you're actually pushing the corrosion out. Even if you sandblast the rebar all the way to white, you're still connected to other rebar that's already out there. So you push that corrosion reaction out. In the case of phosgrete, we cure acidic, so we're actually drawing the corrosion reaction in, and the phosphoric acid in our liquid activator is a natural rust converter, as I mentioned, converting iron oxide to ferric phosphate. So it does stop the corrosion reaction, and by pulling the additional corrosion back in, we do not see the halo effect in the surrounding repair area. Any other questions? All right, great job, guys.